This is how, for a group of college students, the game Among Us turned deadly. One night, Blair was playing with his friends through video call, Brayden, Ali, Jenny, and David. His screen flashed, crewmate, there is one imposter among us. A few seconds later, they all heard Ali gasp through their video call and say, no, no, get away from me. But her character was still standing there, not dead, as if she was just away from the keyboard. After a while of not responding, Jenny goes to check on her. But as Jenny walked into her room, she found Ali on the ground surrounded by a pool of blood then her computer screen flashes dead body reported at this time Blair picks up the phone to call the police but when he hears footsteps coming closer to his room he opens the door to find Brayden in the common room holding a knife in one hand and a computer in the other Blair shuts the door opens the window to try to climb out but he catches a glimpse on his computer screen one last time dead body reported with an image of his character this is why you should believe what kids say. Sarah was an eight-year-old girl who always wore a tinfoil hat. I tried to get her to take it off or at least try to understand why she always wore it. I kept trying to reassure her. It's perfectly safe to remove the tinfoil. No one will listen to your thoughts or try to control your mind. Sarah said, when they hear my thoughts, they'll try to kill me. I replied, please, I promise nothing bad will happen. Pinky swear. Sarah finally smiled. As her pinky fingers locked, she shut her eyes and yanked off the tinfoil. I jumped back. My heart pounded. Sarah Asked, Dr. Taylor, are you okay? A ringing filled my ears. Then I heard whispers, all talking at once, until the voices became clear. Take the knife from the cabinet. The voice wasn't Sarah's. Then my body moved. I clenched my muscles, but my feet shuffled towards the cabinet. Sarah's eyes widened. She grabbed the tinfoil and pushed it back on her head. And instantly, the voices disappeared. It turns out she wasn't wearing the tinfoil to keep something out. She was wearing it to keep the voices in. This is why you should never answer a call from your own number. Tim was woken up by his phone constantly ringing, but he ignored it and went back to sleep. That day he went to work, pulled out his phone, and saw that he had a missed call from his own number. He thought this must be a coincidence. He went to hang out with his friend and another call came. This time he picked up and heard his own voice repeating whatever he'd say back to him until he was about to hang up. The voice said, you're going downhill. He felt very uneasy, but tried to let it go. The next morning at work, his number called again, but this time he felt terrified. So he made up an excuse and drove home as fast as he could. He knew deep inside some kind of a confrontation was coming. As soon as he got home, he saw his car pull into the driveway, and he saw himself get out of the car with a terrifying smile on his face. His doppelganger had stalked him and found him. Tim barricaded himself in his bedroom, but his doppelganger was banging on the door. He knew he was almost out of time. That's when he had one last idea. He pulled out his phone and called himself, and he heard his own voice reply, how are you calling me from this number? Who are you? This is why you should never deliver a letter in person. Once a woman was living in Berlin after World War II. Supplies were tight, money was short, and everyone was hungry. But one day the woman was walking through a crowd when she accidentally bumped into a blind man. They started to talk. The man eventually asked her for a favor, to deliver a letter for him to an address written on the envelope. She agreed. She was about to go deliver this letter when she turned around and saw the blind man running away without his cane. She felt suspicious of this behavior, so she went to the police. The police then decided to visit the address written on the envelope to see if they could find anything. Then they made a shocking discovery. They ended up arresting three butchers who had been harvesting human flesh and selling it to the starving people. Then they opened up the envelope to see what was written inside and it only said one line. This is the last one I'm sending you today. Do you know someone who wants to be around you all the time? For one newly married couple, this quickly turned into something more terrifying. So this couple got married and moved into their new house together. Soon the husband noticed that his wife became more attached to him than usual, as in she wouldn't be able to spend one moment away from him. She said, when you're not at home, I still feel you near me. I hear you calling my name. He just thought that she was being sweet, but the truth is not so simple. One day after he got back from work, his wife said, I think there's something wrong with me. You walked from the kitchen to the bedroom and was staring out the window all day, but the husband knew that he was at work all day. Over the the next few days she started acting even weirder until one night she was next to her husband and said you're not here you're there you're in the kitchen then they both heard a noise the husband walked into the kitchen to investigate and he saw himself standing there with a blank lifeless expression on his face this man or whoever it was walked out of the kitchen and disappeared into the hallway and as the husband went back into his bedroom to get his wife he heard someone's voice coming from behind him it was his wife's voice only it wasn't and it whispered into his ear we are here to stay forever
Have you ever seen someone with extremely long hair? Well, a man from Yamada Village in Japan saw a woman with very long hair, nearly down to her knees, but things were much stranger than they seemed. He was walking down a narrow street when this woman approached him, and as he walked closer, he realized that she'd been smiling the whole time. But this wasn't a normal, friendly smile. There was something strange about it that made him feel creeped out. But he smiled back anyways because he found her beautiful. This would be his last mistake. In that moment, her hair rose up and stuck to him. Strands of hair hooked onto his clothes. He he ran as fast as he could, terrified. He got home quickly, locked the door, but couldn't fall asleep all night. The next morning, he felt a bit better, so he opened the door to try to go to work. But he saw that on the other side, his door was covered in scratches. He had run into Hariona, the long-haired woman from Japanese urban legend whose hair can turn into hooks. She's also known as a smiling woman, as she usually smiles at people from the shadows and also specifically targets men who smile back at her. Comment below what you would do if you ran into her and follow to see more. This is why you should never spread rumors. Once there was a girl called Grace who always wore a hat to school. Even in the summer, she always had a knitted black beanie pulled down to her eyes. Soon, the rumors started around school. Some people said she must have ball patches or have another medical condition that the students didn't know about. Either way, she was constantly bullied for always wearing that hat. One day, Grace's class had a new teacher whose eyes immediately fell on Grace. She said, no hats in class. Grace's eyes widened and she went pale. Well, what are you waiting for? Take it off. Grace replied, I can't. The teacher grew angry, reached over, grabbed the hat, and yanked it off of Grace's head. The room fell silent, then screams, vomit, terror, and chaos. The back of Grace's head was blown open. Bits of skull caved into her head. A small matching hole sat on her forehead near her hairline. Grace then stood up and ran out of the room, sobbing. That was the last anyone has ever seen of Grace. A couple years passed and people stopped talking about it as much until a new kid joined their class. A kid who always wears a scarf. Ghost stories from around the world. Now this is hands down my most requested video. Mexico, La Llorona. Once there was a woman named Maria who married a rich man and had two children. But eventually her marriage hit a rough patch and her husband started spending less and less time with her and the kids. Until finally Maria caught him cheating. Absolutely enraged at this, she ends up drowning her two children. She immediately regrets it and tried to save them, but it was too late. Then she stopped eating and grew thinner and thinner until she resembled a skeleton. Eventually, she finally passed away by the same river that she drowned her children, still crying and mourning over them. So after she died, she went to heaven but was denied entry. She was banished to purgatory on earth until she could find her lost sons. And that's how she became La Llorona, which also translates to the weeping woman. She floats over bodies of water in a long white funeral gown. She also kidnaps children and attacks cheating husbands. If this happened to you at work, would you quit your job? One day, a janitor at a hospital in Indonesia was working the night shift alone. And understandably, the part of the hospital he hated cleaning the most, especially at night, was the morgue. But he went in that night, finished cleaning, and felt like someone was watching him. He thought he must just be psyching himself out. When he finished cleaning, he went outside, but the electricity suddenly shut off. Then he heard the sound of a woman crying. This is when he started feeling scared. But he could have never guessed what the crying sound was coming from. The last room he was meant to clean was one of the operating rooms. When he opened the curtain he saw a pale nurse underneath the bed looking up at him she started crawling out from under the bed and he saw that her legs had been broken clean 